Hello, I'm Captain Stacy Spell, Commanding Officer of Media Relations Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about a law enforcement related injury, also known as a Leary, that occurred in Southeast Division in the city of Los Angeles on October 12th, 2021 at around 2.58 p.m. A Leary is a use of force incident where an individual requires hospitalization. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you can have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know right now. The LAPD conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We're still at the very early stages of this investigation, which can often take up to a year to complete, and our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies in the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution, the images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Southeast patrol officers responded to a radio call of a naked man armed with a sword in the area of West 145th Street and Menlo Avenue. When officers arrived to the area of the call, they met with a community member who directed them to the location of the subject. Here's the call and corresponding radio broadcast for this incident. Hello, 694 CHP. Hey, sir. Hey, inform for you guys, uh, West 145th Street with a cross of South Menlo Avenue. Okay. I just had a caller who was getting a picture from his relatives who are live in that area for a male black adult in shorts walking around with a sword and yelling at nothing. With a sword. Yeah. Okay. Male is believed to be walking eastbound on 145th past Menlo towards what looks to be, I guess that would be Orchard. Okay, I'll have an officer sent out. Have a great day, sir. Be safe. Thank you. Green Southeast Unit 415 Mount with a knife, 145th and Menlo. Second hand information from CHP Lessing, East on 145th, suspect male black, no shirt, shorts, walking with a sword, code 2 incident 2868, already 1871. The officers attempted to establish communications with the subject for several minutes in an effort to de escalate the situation and gain voluntary compliance. They repeatedly asked the subject to drop the sword. However, the subject refused to comply with the officers. As officers continued to verbalize with the subject, he advanced toward the officer's police vehicle while still holding the sword and struck the hood of the police vehicle. Both officers exited their vehicle, deployed their tasers, and struck the subject, causing him to drop the sword. The subject was taken into custody without further incident. A taser is an electronic control device that is carried by nearly all patrol officers. It fires two metal probes that are designed to cause neuromuscular incapacitation. Body-worn video cameras are used by most officers assigned to field duties. They are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera prohibits viewers from seeing everything the officers saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn video cameras have a buffer of video without audio from the previous two minutes prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly, where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. Here's body-worn video from the officers involved in this incident. Elmer, drop the knife. Drop the sword. Put the sword on the ground. Listen, Elmer, you're not you're not in trouble. Not in danger, Elmer. Elmer, you're not you're not in danger. We're here to help you. Drop the sword. Elmer, put the sword down. We're here to help you. We're not going to hurt you. Yes. Elmer, put the sword on the ground. There you go. Put it on the ground, sir. Come over here. Talk to me. You're not in trouble. I'm. I'm you are the king. You are a king. Come over here. Talk to me. Elmer, you are a king. All right, come over here. Let, let's talk. You're not in trouble. Step over here. Come over here. Come over here to us. 
any air unit from an unselfish frequency for a Elmer, you're, you're not in trouble, Elmer. We're not going to hurt you. Yeah, put your hands up, King. King Elmer. Come over here, talk to us. Elmer, we're not going to hurt you, Elmer. King Elmer, come over here, King Elmer. Drop the sword, King Elmer. Hey, drop the sword, man. Hey, back up. Elmer, drop the sword. Shit, man. Elmer, drop it. I know, I got the teaser. You got the teaser? Yeah, but it's a short range. Hey, watch out, man. Throwing out the TC. Chill, chill. Close the door, I can't see right. Let me switch to the wrong one. Oh, shit. Hey, Elmer, get the beam beam too. This guy, dude. He has a mental illness. Yeah. Take five, four, three. Take five, Roger. Okay. Hey, watch out. Hey, drop it. Drop it, sir. Drop it. Drop it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Los Angeles Fire Department paramedics transported the subject to a local hospital where he was treated and admitted for multiple non-life-threatening taser puncture wounds to his groin area as well as a head laceration that he sustained during the subsequent fall resulting from the taser deployment. Force Investigation Division was notified and assumed investigative responsibility. Investigators recovered the subject's sword at the scene and booked it as evidence. The subject was placed on a 72-hour mental evaluation hold and released from the hospital following the evaluation period. The subject was not arrested. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident. We will continue interviewing any new witnesses that may come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is complete, our Critical Incident Review Division will forward their findings to the Chief of Police who will make his recommendation to the Civilian Board of Police Commissioners. The board will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics and use of force in this instance met the high standards expected of all LAPD officers. If you would like more information on how the LAPD investigates all serious uses of force, visit lapdonline.org where you can find the LAPD's use of force policy and procedures. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing.